The last example that we'll walk through is, is one that I call many to few. And this is a very uh, common application of modifiers. And this has been uh, combined from several clients who have had a typical uh, setup like this that we've seen the same type of issue occurring in. And it's with creating modifiers to do shipping charges. Uh, in this case, here we have a shipping charge model that's based on a weight and distance type of calculation. So the different clients would have you know, one or more, and typically several shipping classes, one day, two day, air, ground, truck, uh, in some cases up to 15 or more different shipping classes. The other piece of the information would be distance. The most common way that's represented is via zone. So you may be familiar uh, with UPS zone terminology. Uh, zone 1 from when shipping from Chicago might be Michigan and Indiana, etc. Zone is based on distance from the shipping point of origin. In this particular example, the other common thread was a line level calculation of the freight charge per unit. So rather than just creating a lump sum type of uh, modifier, each line had to have its portion of the freight, total freight charge attributed to that line. So in addition to the shipping class and zone, we typically had a graded scale of weight. So if the uh, order weight was from you know, zero to one pound, there was a certain charge from one to two, et cetera. Uh, in the worst case, there were 150 levels of uh, weight grading that would occur. The way these modifiers were structured, and I'll use the worst case example because it's the most illustrative. So there was one modifier for each ship shipping class and shipping zone combination. Uh, the list qualifiers you would then see the shipping class, the zone, and then typically a bunch of other conditions that represented the various qualifying combinations of order types or order terms or other conditions that might be present. Very rarely was it just shipping class and zone, usually other, uh, other conditions as well. On the modifier lines, what you would see in the worst case was one line that represented a flat charge per line if the weight had exceeded a given level. So in this case, if the order weight was over 150 pounds, then the line, each line would get a flat charge. But in this case, there were then 150 additional lines on, the mo on each modifier, and each line represented essentially the one pound increment. So the lines each had an order, rate, order weight qualifier that said if weight between 0 and 1 or 1.001 and 2, for example. The item that was defined on the modifier lines was all items. And the other characteristic here was that each modifier line would use the same formula. So there's a very complicated calculation to take the weight, prorate it. That weight calculation would use the value on the modifier line to pass into the formula, return its value then to the pricing engine. The problem with this was just purely the numbers, as you might expect. So there were about 150 combinations of shipping class and zone. So combine that with up to you know, 150 lines on every modifier, you're looking at you know, 15,000 and in some cases up to 20 plus thousand lines that would be looked at for every single pricing call. And again, the reasons were, the biggest reason was that each line had all items. So every item that was priced, regardless of whether we get the freight charge application or not, would look at those lines. And again, we could be talking upwards of 15 to 20,000 lines chosen. So the solution was to first create a new pricing attribute for order weight. Uh, the seated order weight attribute is a qualifying attribute. So what the first thing we did was redefine that or define an additional attribute for order weight as a pricing attribute, we use the same function that was delivered, we just created it as a pricing attribute. The next thing that we did was in the formula that calculated the actual charge per line, the formula initially represented what was called the modifier value. So it would read the value that was sitting on the discount line and then use that in the formula calculation. Well, every discount line had a qualifier that was a range of order weight. So what we did was we replaced the formula line with a factor list and then essentially created a lookup table, which is what a factor list is, that says if the weight is 0 to 1, we use this value. If it's 1 to 2, we use that value. The reason that was able to work was the value that was on each individual modifier line, if you looked across the 150 modifiers, the 0 to 1 pound line all had the same value. 
So we were able to consolidate that into one list. And then we also added the weight pricing attribute to the flat charge line. So what ended up happening is each modifier that was out there went from 151 lines to two. One that represented the, the flat charge line and then one that represented the actual calculation that used a lookup instead of 150 lines each with a qualifier. So in this case now a given pricing call rather than grabbing 15 to 20,000 lines would grab at most 100 based on the all item, or I'm sorry, based on the uh, the line definition and the weight for that particular transaction. So thank you for listening to this presentation. Uh, if you're interested in any additional assistance with ad optimizing your advanced pricing implementation, we encourage you to contact us. Our email address is sales at dark.com, D-A-R-C.com, or our toll-free number is 877-476-7151.